Okay, so today we're doing a video for a black screen Commodore 64. Now I've already diagnosed this computer and fixed it, but what I'm doing now in this video is showing you guys how I arrived at the repair. So the first thing is when I got this on the bench, it was missing the fuse. There was no fuse in it. So I did put a fuse in it and it was still a blank screen and I did check some voltages. What I did do is I have my testing board and I took out the VIC, the 1704, and I tested them and they did test good. Uh, when I was conducting my tests, I always take the SID chip out. Uh, okay, so whenever we're testing uh, Commodore 64s, we don't have the SID chips in them. Uh, it's just a way of, if we have a good SID and we keep messing around, we may blow it out if there's a problem with a bad trace. So what I did notice about this machine, every time I'd turn it on and I'd get to the screen, when I turn it on, you'll notice that the screen on my monitor detects S-Video input. I've seen some black screens that I repaired that when I turn it on, it doesn't do that. So that's telling me voltage is getting through the S-Video cable, which means something's actually working here. We just have maybe a bad chip, bad trace. So the next thing I'm going to try before I do anything, and I've already checked voltages, so I know I'm getting the voltages where I need them, is I take my cart. And I'm going to put a cart in here and turn it on. Because these carts sometimes bypass other chips and maybe give me an indication of what's going on. So I put that in there, hit the power, and we get some sort of a screen. Now this is the visible solar system, so that's definitely not what we're expecting to see. But I'll turn it off and I'll turn it back on again. And we're getting some sort of background. So we'll try it again. Sometimes by doing this on and off, we'll get some sort of level of graphic or something. But what that's telling me is things are working. And uh, by doing some research on Ray Carlson's site, we found that if we put a cartridge in and we get garbage, that it could be we have bad RAM on this particular machine. So he suggests that we piggyback a memory chip on U10. So that's what I'm going to do. And as so I'm going to take my flashlight, that's U10. To do this, we take a, another memory chip, a known working one, and we're going to piggyback that on there. And of course, we got to make sure that the pins line up directly with the bad one. And then its orientation is good. Okay. And now we'll hit the power button and let's see what we get. And as you can see, our cartridge does work. And we have the visual solar system operating. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do one more test. So I'm going to take the card out, I'm going to bring my keyboard over, and I'm going to load a game from this particular memory card we got in there, we'll type run. We'll go down to Don's at. Let's do something more fun than that. That's definitely more fun. And as you guys know, Commodore's load slow. And we already have some joysticks plugged in. So once this loads, this is a, I use this game as a good test for a Commodore. It tests the sound, it'll test the graphics, 
and it'll give you a good idea of how well your commoner is working. And mind you, this is still with the piggybacked ram chip. So, although that's not the way I'd repair it, it's a good way to see that it is working. And so, that is the game we choose. Very good game. If you don't have this game for your Commodore 64, I definitely recommend it. Feel free to speed up the video if you're watching this and getting bored. And that's the repair. So you can see just by doing that, this Commodore 64 is back ready to get it reassembled, cleaned up. And we'll be putting this one back on eBay for uh, the new owner to enjoy. Thanks for watching the video.